Yo, welcome back to a new video, cuties. This will be the first of many videos to help a newer or a lesser experienced survivors learn how to loop certain tiles in Dead by Daylight. So, welcome uh, to Loop School with Ghost. It's the bell ring. Four, three, Let's go. Our first lesson in Loop School will be learning how to properly loop TNL walls. For the purpose of this video, I will not be running a perks to assist me as we are simulating ideal loop pathing. Let's get to it. Before we start, I want to mention some key notes to remember while looping TNL walls. 1. Killer Red Stain Every killer emits a red stain in front of them during the course of the trial. This red stain can disappear and reappear depending on perks and add-ons. This red stain is really useful in determining not only where the killer is facing, but also the direction in which they intend on moving. So be sure to pay attention to this during chase. 2. We have Camera Angles as a survivor, one of your biggest advantages is your field of view, as you're playing in third person and the killer is having to be in first person. I find it helpful to fixate your camera on the killer and the positioning while looping in order to be able to react to any spontaneous changes in movement and pathing. Volts are especially helpful if you can break line of sight but still see the killer. But don't get too fixated because you want to make sure you know where you're going. 3. We have Mind Games a lot of looping requires a lot of mind gaming. Mind gaming is a psychological tactic used to manipulate or intimidate the killer and their pathing and is essential to becoming a master looper. A couple of mind games would be unique pathing, which is taking unpredictable pathways to confuse the killer's whereabouts of your location. Things like vault faking and baiting pallet drops will be considered mind gaming. To start, here I am looping in some Michael Myers. TNL walls are probably my favorite as there's a lot of 50-50ing and mind games involved in a specific loop. So basically, whichever way the killer goes, we want to go the same way, but taking the shorter route. So from this position, the killer can decide to go to the left or to the right, and I will adjust my pathing accordingly. So quick tip here, it is better to be more patient than anything. Usually around corners you can wait a safe distance from the vault before taking it in order to ensure the killer does not double back and you end up vaulting into them. So like I mentioned, use your FOB to your advantage and watch the red stain. So since he vaulted here, I'm pretty sure we can make it around to the long wall again for another vault. This is a great example of mind gaming. So since the red stain fades away here, we can assume the killer decided to double back on his pathing as a means to trick us. In return, I am able to change the direction of my pathing in accordance to the killers and maintain or even gain distance from them. Right here you guys are going to witness a vault fake which is a tactic used in the mind gaming as I explained earlier. At this point, both windows have been blocked due to the entity, so by this time you can either run off to a connecting loop or try some unique pathing in order to gain some distance and make it to the next loop. Thank you. 
Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this helps anyone trying to better their looping abilities on TNL walls specifically. Thank you so much for watching. At next loop school session, I'll go over how to run a jungle gym tile. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.